I'm Tony Hill. And I'm Jonathan Scott. And you're watching Sports Plus Chicago. Hi, I'm Tony Hill with my partner Jonathan Scott. And we're going to talk some Windy City football. Now, yesterday's game was a classic illustration of Ben but don't break. I had a chance to watch the Chicago Bears. That first half, I don't even think they had a chance. I thought San Francisco was just polished. They were just running through them. But that defense really stepped up. They didn't break not one moment, and they just took it to them. And I got to give them some credit. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it was a great illustration of showing poise and sticking to their guns. First half, Chicago didn't do that hot. Second half, they came out, made adjustments, did their job, and, and came out beautifully. That mean, they played fourth quarter football, 21 points in the, in, at the end of the game, and came out with a victory. Well, you got to look at it. I mean, you look at the first half, San Francisco's up 17-7. to They clearly dominated the game, although you, can, you had a feeling that if, if, if Chicago could just get a little bit going there into the game. Now, you look at it right now. Here's a team that was excited. They're playing in San Francisco. These guys are high-fiving. You know, you got Gore, who's probably about 5'5", five, five, but this yeah. guy, and he runs lower, you know, like a little Newhouse, and you might be a little too young for that, but Robert <laughs> Newhouse was a guy I played with who was probably about 5'4". He had thighs about 37 inches. I mean, this guy yeah. was a big boy. But Gore's got the same kind of make, and they were running the ball, you know, exceptionally well, and, of course, Kaepernick was making some big plays. Yeah, but, you know, the thing about it is if you look at stats and you look at what's real, San Francisco made too many mistakes. They had 15 penalties. 15 penalties are drive killers. They're, it, it's interesting. When you look at the stats, uh, Chicago made four, 17 points off of turnovers. And when you do that, you put yourself in a position to win. Uh, Kaepernick went through three interceptions or well, four total turnovers. You can't win ball games that way. But what I have to give my hats off to with Chicago is they, they stuck to their guns, they came out with a game plan, and they were successful. And, and it's interesting that you say that. And I say interesting that you say that. It's a simple fact that you've got, you know, Brandon Marshall who's injured. You've got, you know, Jeffries who's injured. And it was clearly evident on the field. However, Cutler found a way to, to get to him. In the first half, I thought he should have thrown the ball more to Marshall just because of who Marshall is. One thing about being a wide receiver out there and a, a receiver with the magnitude of the respect that Marshall has, they're going to double team him no matter what the circumstances are. So what that means, he takes away a portion of that defense. And so when they weren't doubling because they knew he was injured and they were playing a man-to-man -man and what we call a clue, that's when the cornerback's just watching the quarterback and he's not playing for the long ball. So mm -hmm. essentially, he was playing Brandon pretty tight and giving Brandon an opportunity to catch. When you're 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and you got a defensive back 5'11", you got to go to your main man. Mm -hmm. Well, the second half, without a question, Cutler went to him. Without a question, you, you look at it, you know, Marshall has three touchdowns, one spectacular mm -hmm. catch, and, and I can recall when I was playing against it, when I played a game, we're playing the Washington Redskins up in Washington. <laughs> now, I know this is Chicago, but we're playing up in Washington. We're down 26-3 to at halftime, yeah. and Danny White throws me this bomb. I'm about 75 yards in the air, and I reach out, and the ball just stuck. Yeah. And I take it in for a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, it was sweet, though, John. It was uh, sweet. Okay. But I heard yeah. Brandon after the game, and he said, you know, tell us about that one play. That was really nice. He said, you know what? I just put my hand up there and it just stuck. You know? yeah. and, and as a receiver, I could truly identify that. But where I'm kind of getting at is that the bottom line is that they went to their main man. I mean, mm -hmm. Jeffries is growing up, and he's becoming a player. But, uh, and Bennett is as well. But Marshall is their man, and he illustrated that in the game. Yeah, and the thing that, just to feed off that, the thing that makes it so interesting is that they have great targets with Alshon, with Brandon Marshall, with Martellus. Now, when Jay is in a position to make a great throw, he can do it every time. I mean, his accuracy is pinpoint. You can see when they got in the red zone, every time they threw, it was, it was in a position where only the Martellus, Brandon Marshall could catch it. <laughs> I mean, the fade routes were perfect. When, when Jay is on point, he is on point. Uh, big shout out to, to Jay, man, you did a great job. So. Uh, if they just continue to do that with upcoming games, I really see success. And then not to even mention, being a, a road game, an NFC game, that really helps with their, their psyche. That helps with their with strength of schedule. It's just, it's just good things come, that come from that. Well, you know, watching the game, Jonathan, and, and being an offensive lineman, I, I want to harp on that because you got a better sense or a feel for the game. San Francisco was stunning. They were blitzing. They were coming after Jay, and, and Jay was trying to throw the ball downfield. In reality, he probably needed to throw the short passes take a three-step drop and let it go. How tough is that for an offensive lineman when you guys got, you guys, guys get guys blitzing nonstop throughout the game 
yet, and you're not you're very productive with that first half. Mm -hmm. How, is that frustrating for you as a, uh, as a lineman? Well, you know, me, I, I kind of play with a little ego. I like, I like, I like, no, the, I, I like, you really I, play with an ego. I, I swear, I swear oh, to God, okay, this, okay. this is what it is. I, I like when they bring the he all out. He plays with an ego, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. The thing about it is when they bring out an all right, an all out blitz, someone's open. It's football math, you know. So when, when someone's in, in your, in your face, that means someone's open. My thing is, is that the offensive line did a real good job of picking up that extra, that extra defender, making sure Cutler can get his rhythm off, throw it to the hot, hot targets. Uh, you know, I, me personally, I like blitzes because it exposes. It, we can expose them. So, <laughs> with with the game plan that that Chicago came with, they really executed, and they did a great job of executing off of turnovers. Hey, we'll be right back with Dennis McKinnon right after this message. Hi, this is Paul Southern for Sports Plus, and I'm here with the beautiful 2015 Fiat Abarth. This is the performance edition of the Fiat 500. This thing is quick. With a 1.4-liter 1416 valve multi-air turbo engine, this heavy-duty six-speed automatic transmission will make sure you get there while still getting 27 miles per gallon. With 16-inch 6x5-inch aluminum wheels, bifunction halogen projector headlamps, and in back, you'll find the dual bright exhaust tips. Check out these great performance cloth high back bucket seats. Black with red trim in the front and the back seats. The Abarth features the Blue and Me hands-free communication as well as the Fiat premium audio system. Check out the leather wrap shift knob as well as the steering wheel mounted audio controls. You want something cool? You want something fast? You can get it right here at Bettenhausen Fiat of Tenley Park. Sports Plus Chicago is sponsored by Bettenhausen Automotive. It's better at Bettenhausen. All right, welcome back to Sports Plus Chicago. I'm Paul Suffin, joined by my co-host Jennifer Eve and the one and only number 85, Mr. Dennis McKenna. How are you? How are you doing? Good to see you. As a former player, is it hard to watch the team when they're not doing well? You kind of feel like, ah. Oh, no, because I've, be I've been there. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> sometimes you don't come in on the, on the right side of the stick. Winning and losing is part of the game. Um, mm -hmm. But as long as you give a great effort, it's all that really matters. Your fans are going to cheer for you or boo you, depending on the climate. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, you're a bear, and you're supposed to do the best you can and represent the city. Well, and we also love that you play for the Cowboys as well. So, so you kind of keep track of them as well? <laughs> I just went where there was a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always going to be a Bears fan. Yeah. Yeah, that's never going to change. Absolutely. Well, I know this is home for you, and uh, and we're in Dallas and Chicago. What are the things you like to do around here? I mean, obviously we're in Tenley Park right now at the Bettenhausen Fiat, we're but at but what do we need to? Where do we need to go? I think Ed and Joe's is a good start. Tenley Park is a great place, but in Chicago, you got to go downtown. Yeah. Are you looking for steak? You're looking for pasta, Italian? You know, sushi. seafood, sushi. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking for all of the above. <laughs> Food in sushi. Now, that's sushi. nothing normally <laughs> a guy doesn't talk about sushi. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, there are a few great Japanese places downtown that they, that'll be up your alley. But I'm a steak guy. Yeah. yeah you gotta go Texas, to, so we know you got to go to the Chop House or Ginger right. Jetties. Good. Yes, indeed. Good. Well, hey, we've got, we've got the best tour guide ever. I mean, one of, the, one of the Bears greats. And, and I can probably get you in for free. Oh, hey, I like that. <laughs> After this, we're going to be taking a little uh, field trip. Yes, yeah, get field trip down to Chicago. You don't want to go back. Okay, and now i got to ask, you know, uh, I, I do a lot of uh, entertainment interviews, and I interview a lot of actors, some who have won Oscars, and I always ask, where is the Oscar? So, so where is the ring? Where do you keep the, the mighty ring? It's sitting in safe deposit box. Yeah. It comes out once a year, Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, Other than that, I don't wear it. Yeah, it's... It's probably good, right? Are you like no. me? Were you afraid, afraid to lose it? <laughs> no, I, uh, I had an incident many years, guys. Someone shook my hand and wouldn't let go. Oh, oh my and God. the cops had to come get her. Wow. Oh, yeah. Get her. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She was not really all there. Right. Yeah. It was one of those situations. So I said, you know what? I don't want to have to chase anybody. So normally I do appearance, I take the trophy more so than the ring. But I know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> was so, it like Lord of the Rings where she grabbed onto it? It's like, my precious. <laughs> yes. And, and at the same time, it was a woman, so I could not even be aggressive at oh, all. Oh, yeah. I was just nice, and security was everywhere, so they, they took care of the situation. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mentioned movies earlier. Do you get out to the movies much? I'm a movie freak. Oh, good. Well, we've got one that we wanted to discuss that's coming out this week, actually. It's called The Guest. And uh, I don't know if you've seen the previews for it, but it's a new movie by Adam Wingard and Simon Barrett. And uh, it, it's, it's pretty freaky. Uh, so it's a thriller, and it's about a guy who comes back uh, 
to sort of console a family uh, who had uh, lost a son in the, in the overseas. And, uh, and he's not quite what he seems. And uh, sort of terror ensues. So it's, it's got a little bit of elements of thriller, a little bit of elements of horror, a little bit of elements of drama. But uh, it's a star-making turn by the star Dan Stevens, who a lot of people might recognize from Downtown Abbey. So actually, let's take a look, because I got to talk to all three of them in Dallas wow. about, yeah, about this film. And I think you guys are gonna, really going to like it. It's called The Guest. Let's check it out. Great job on this film. I think this is the 80s movie that a lot of us miss oh, and a lot of people maybe even haven't seen is that kind of the feel that you were going for yeah in a lot of ways I mean I think uh, you know we all kind of came of age in terms of film awareness during the 80s mm -hmm. you know and a lot of like you know my first favorite films you know are, are films that were kind of current during the mid to 80s um, and I think you know those are therefore the films that really inspired us to want to become filmmakers mm -hmm. um, so you know so yeah it was about kind of revisiting you know the original source of our inspiration which for us was kind of 80s genre films. And this was I think a big star turn for Dan. How did you guys know when you met like this is our guy? Well, did you know Andy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well I just looked into those dreamy blue eyes and, uh, and it was yeah no I mean it was it was one of those things where you know we weren't just looking for, uh, you know, a, a boring conventional action star to come in here and do this because, you know, action's only a small part of it. But, um, you know, I just wanted somebody who had, you know, sort of a, uh, 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 just a natural likability to him and a charm and uh, and an intelligence and. Uh, you know, because that was important to the character, you know, like he, he has to infiltrate this family and, and gain their trust very quickly. And um, who wouldn't trust Dan? Well, and are you ready for this? Because I think a lot of people are talking about you now and you've got so many other big projects coming up. Are you kind of ready for the big spotlight, so to speak? Yeah, here? it's been a busy couple of years, you know, and, and doing something like The Guest was really, uh, you know, it was exactly the kind of thing I was looking for without knowing it. And, uh, you know, I think Adam and Simon were, were keen to sort of move on a little bit from, from the background they come from, as was I. And we kind of, you know, we, we met in the middle. We met at this sort of funny crossroads. We're like, hey, we want to do something different. And I was, you know, I was like, well, that sounds good. And so they put a gun in my hand, sent me out into the <laughs> desert, and, uh, and the guest happened. So yeah, it was fun. Now, and, and I have to ask, because making a, a lot of the rest of us guys look bad, what did you do to like, stay in that kind of shape? That's uh, it was it was a, a bit of work. I think when I first met Adam, it would be fair to say I was not in in that kind of shape. But uh, I promised that I would I would get there in order to sort of look and, and feel uh, the part. And um, yeah, it was a big part of the the psychological preparation as well. Um, and a lot of the discipline that came with with some of the martial arts was was very key as well. Now I know this one had to be a lot of fun to work on. So is there a certain day, scene, or time? on the set that you think you'll always remember? To me, it's always, it, it's, I, I look at it more as like a, an exciting challenge, you know, and, uh, and this film was, was wrought full of challenges, you know. I mean, there's, there's some major action scenes using a lot of squibs and explosions and guns and stuff, and that was stuff that we had never um, attempted before or, or had the, uh, the budget to even realize. And so it was a lot of stuff like, you know, like those kind of things and just, you know, and, and this was a lot more of a performance-driven film than I'd ever done before. So, you know, trying to, you know, you know, balance everything all together with the weird 80s tone and try not to let it fall too much into parody, you know. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to make it sound like I had a horrible time or anything, but, uh, you know. Uh. Well, from an actor's perspective as well, you know, every day going into work, it would be a slightly different different game, you know, and I go up to Adam and say, you know, what are we doing today? And it might be, you know, walking through a big dusty quarry and it felt like making a western. And then you'd go in on Wednesday and you'd be crawling along a, a corridor with machine gun fire going off and you felt like you were in the Bourne movies or something. So, you know, there were a lot of different facets to this film and it was, uh, it was a blast just kind of, you know, really mashing up those genres and, and having a really fun time, I think. Now we always ask people their Hail Mary moment, the moment where they just kind of had to go for it in their career and it worked out for them. What do you suppose that was for you guys? I feel like, you know, I mean, I feel like this in a weird way is it. Um, you know, everything that we've done prior to this had the safety at least of being within like a very clearly defined genre um, and also being, you know, so low budget that there was a, that the bar was fairly low for us to succeed. Um, you know, this was our first real chance to, to step it up and, uh, and you know, and, and try something really unique and different and, and uh, you know, we all really went for it. But, you know, uh, I, I would say that this is, this is our moment. How about for you? Well, I guess leaving Downton was a big step uh, for me and I didn't quite know what I was going to step on to. Uh, I didn't know what form the next, uh, next few things would take. 
But, um, but like I said, when I met Adam and Simon, and you know, we were at this sort of crossroads and wanting to do something very, very different, you know, this, this seemed to fit the bill. And so, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a big one for all of us, I guess, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is it. This, is, this was, you know. Us. No pressure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it, it was us all kind of stepping out of our comfort zone and what people kind of knew us as and trying something uh, totally, totally unique, you know. Right. Well, thank you. Hopefully, we'll see you for the guest, too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. What do you think? We need to go to the movies? Uh, yes. Check that out in the next week. Equalize with Denzel Washington. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I've got a lot of friends who got to see that, the Toronto International Film Festival, and they said that one's just so much fun, except uh, it gets pretty brutal at the end, and uh, the last half hour apparently takes place in a Home Depot, and you'll never look at a Home Depot the same again. So. And have to we're worry in Chicago, about that we're used to violence. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Just part of the thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, great. So where do you like to see movies around here? Anywhere where I can get in for a matinee. Okay. A matinee when I actually can watch it and actually hear all the words, try to go in before the kids come. Oh, good. Okay. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So where there's a Marcus or a Regal Theater, you'll normally find me almost every Tuesday or Friday. Good, yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, there's something wonderful about the movie-going experience when you can have a nice, quiet theater. So we're, we're definitely going to, on our off time, going to have to explore the Chicago theaters. Now, we've got to take a little bit of a break, but we'll be right back on Sports Plus next. Sports Plus Chicago is sponsored by Bittenhausen Automotive. It's better at Bittenhausen. All right, we're back on Sports Plus Chicago. Well, now we've got a very, very special segment that we're going to talk about. We've got Jerry and William from Garden Gallery. And uh, tell us a little bit about this program. This is so cool. I see the art right behind us here, all around us. Love that. Yeah, it's a training program and a business that we opened up about two years ago, just up the street here in Tinley Park. And it's a place for people with various skill levels, various artistic experience, like to come together, hang out, and create this incredible art as a way of expressing themselves and also as a different path to employment. And so, like I said, we opened a couple of years ago and we have been so happy with how the village has embraced us, the support of places like Bettenhausen and Ed and Joe's. Uh, it's just been a great experience. Absolutely, and as someone who can't draw anything, <laughs> like not even stick figures. I mean, you're pretty good at stick figure, but. Well, yeah, I can, I can do some stick figures. But I, I gotta note this, you, you gotta see some pretty neat art around here. I mean, I'm looking around here going, you know, this. We were just, we were just blown away. I mean, one of the things that we try to do at the agency is, is essentially help people find their voices mm -hmm. and then use that voice to communicate, you know, who they are and what they want out of life. Well, some people do that much better through art. And we didn't really realize that ourselves, and so we started experimenting with that. And people just started creating this phenomenal stuff. And, uh, and that's what led us to decide we've got to you know, grow this, and it led to the gallery. Um, and people do incredible drawing. We work with ceramics. We work with textiles. Um, and then what we do is those items are sold, and that brings the income in for people that want to work, that want to make money, and want to have the same kind of lives that we have. Yeah. And so it's a win-win situation. I think it's pretty cool that you have a lot of um, awesome volunteers, the artists that come in to help out and you know, teach other value. It's really neat. Well, and that's, we're always looking for people that want to volunteer. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad that you mentioned mm -hmm. that, Jen. Uh, our art director, Beth Koff, is just like incredible in terms of her creativity and the mm -hmm. way that she you know, spends time with the people that, uh, that come to the gallery. Okay. And so if people are out there thinking about gifts, I mean, you know, birthdays, anniversaries, mm -hmm. Christmas is coming, it's so... I think awesome to think about doing good twice. Mm -hmm. You know, buying a gift for somebody, but buying it from somebody that then benefits from that as well. <laughs> and so thanks for bringing up the volunteer though. That's Absolutely. very cool. And, and how would people get involved? Uh, people can go to our website, www.gardengalleryandstudio.com. That's probably the best way. Monday through Friday, nine to four, we're open up the street. Uh, <laughs> And so please, you know, look at the website. You can do that in terms of volunteerism or also purchasing items online. Good. And so that's the best way to that's do it. I saw you guys are on Facebook and Twitter, too. I saw they add the pages. It's social media. That's, 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 a, that's a huge thing. <laughs> it's you know? the name of the game. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and William, you've been enjoying uh, doing some art there yourself, right? Yes, I have been very um, enjoying myself and stuff. And my art piece is right there. And that's I've awesome. been, that's you know, great. pretty much... You know, like Jerry said, I've been just, you know, 
doodling and making do you know making my own creation and you know it's coming really good and stuff and I'm like amazing myself I'm like wow <laughs> this is really good yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so I gotta know, are you are you into art at all, or can you draw or paint or anything? I can do stick figures. Oh, good. Unlike right. you. <laughs> okay. Now my brother had an art scholarship. He turned it down to go serve this country. So wow. he was the only one in the family that had that skill. Mm -hmm. But my hands were used for other things. Good. There you go. Yeah, I, th I think we're gonna have to pick up some paintings here before we leave, right? I love talent, especially God-given talent, artistic yeah. immortality is what I call it, and uh, freedom of expression. So, and, you know, I appreciate. Um, the gift that God gives people when it, when it comes to these hands. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of, what do you tell people when they come up to you and they, they want to get into, when kids want to get into football and they're not quite sure, what, what, what do you have to say? Because it's, it's an interesting business. Do you like contact? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't like contact, it is not, not the sport for you. For you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to be fearless and at the same time, my mom always said, if you go outside and you come back in, you're not dirty, we have a problem. That allows me to understand you're having fun, you're being a kid, and that you have earned your dinner. Good. <laughs> Those are good old days. So your parents pushed you towards football? I was always running. Yeah. So they put a ball in my hand, so it was all good. <laughs> <laughs> so just seemed like the natural thing to do, Natural right? progression, and, uh, and like I said, you gotta find your calling. I think God blesses all with a talent. You just gotta be patient to figure out what it actually is. And if you, once you figure out what it is, enhance it, practice, be the best, create your own legacy. Good. So life after football, tell us a little bit about what you have going on right now. I'm a humanitarian, um, not so much just in Chicago, but around the country. I just raise money for a lot of charities that, that are in need, that are not on federal or state assistance. Hmm. Um, it's all based on relationships and being able to make dreams come true for those who've lost faith. Yeah, absolutely. That. That's great. Well, and, and hopefully we can get you over here to uh, to maybe help out with some kids, or maybe even try your hand at some stick figures, right? I always, hey, well, we'll take you on. I'm always yeah. willing to get into quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well, I tell you what, we'll go over there together, and we'll we'll do a little stick figure battle on on there. I can do that. <laughs> All right, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> well, good. Well, last thing before we get out, get you out of here. We got to ask you, because we did the Hail Mary moment, but sometimes Tony the Thrill Hill likes to say, hey, what about the thrill moment? Is, is there a good thrilling moment that, uh, that's either happened to you recently or on the field that will always stay with you? Being introduced uh, in New Orleans in the starting lineup for Super Bowl XX with my mom in the stands, being in a place I never thought I would be and to be starting uh, in the Super Bowl, it doesn't get any better than that. And for her, who was my number one fan, to actually see her son play. That's yeah. amazing. So that was it. Absolutely. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We're going to have you on uh, all the time now because uh, you are going to be our tour guide, among other things. Yeah. Well, and, uh, yes, come in a little early so we can, I can take you downtown and basically yep. get the silky tour. Okay, I like it. The silky <laughs> tour of Chicago. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Well, we'll be back with more on Sports Plus next. So now we have to introduce to you the master of the taco pizza, the man himself, Mike Clark. How are you, sir? Very good, thank you. Good, yeah. well, it, we got a fantastic surprise when we went over there. And now tonight, I understand you're gonna be feeding us here. We are gonna feed you. Uh, we brought a bunch of pizzas, some of our specialty pizzas, our uh, thin crust, obviously. Uh, we brought our pizza of the month. Uh, you've already experienced the taco, so so we just kind of mix it up tonight with uh, some of our different stuff that we do. Yeah, well, in Texas, people always come there and they go, okay, where's a good steak? Right. But in Chicago, people want to know where's a good pizza and what makes a good Chicago pizza? Well, I, I think a thin crust makes, you know, contrary to the belief that Chicago is the deep dish capital of the world, it's our, our thin crust that really sets us apart from all the other pizzerias. Yeah, That's absolutely. That's my favorite pizza anyway, I love thin crust. Yeah. And, and Joe's has been around forever, right? Forever, since uh, 1961. Yeah. So it's a long time we've been here. Same location in downtown Tinley Park. Uh, yeah. You know, just doing a good thriving business. Yeah. Family owned? Yeah. Family owned, oh, right, wow. exactly. Grew up, uh, you know, with you know all seven brothers and sisters uh, working the operation. Um, you know, some of the things even right out of the house, we used to have to uh, cook our own beef roast it at home and, and make our own coleslaw. You know, that was the, the family chores, you know, as we grew up. Uh, you know, the old 
pan grater and the cabbage. That's why we all have real short fingers right. now. So. <laughs> no, I love it. And in fact, being there, it, it makes me hungry just thinking about it. So I tell you what, we're going to go get some of this great Ed and Joe's pizza, and we're going to move beyond the taco pizza and see why it is that the thin crust pizza is the best right here in Chicago. Very good. And so when you get a chance, Ed and Joe's pizza in Tinley Park, check it out. Okay, inside the dealership, there's a car in here that I have to ask you about. I mean, it's yeah. right there. Not yeah. the one hanging over our heads, right. by the way. Yeah, and, and, and in fact, that car was hanging over our head. Uh, that uh, When we did the remodeling of that good friend of ours, Ray Everham, who owned Everham Motorsports, and that was Jeff Gordon's crew chief for all those years in his first four championships, donated that car to us. Uh, that was originally a Bill Elliott car, and that Casey Kane drove it in 2004. And that, and we hung it up here, and that on display here, and then that car's got a very. That, that was one of the first historical Dodges on the racetrack, and that when they re-entered NASCAR in 2001. Wow. Have you driven it around? Yeah, uh, that that car just actually just in parades. Wow. And yeah, that uh, <laughs> that car was actually uh, had in a bad accident at Darlington mm -hmm. International Raceway, and that and had the. Uh, had the uh, front clip bent in about six inches, so wow. they retired wow. that car. It became a show car. How fast does it go, or did it go? That yeah. car went probably well, well over 200 miles an hour. Wow. And that, uh, <laughs> but it was an inter more an intermediate car, and that, mm. uh, they didn't typically run it at, at the Daytona or Talladega, but mainly ran it at the uh, intermediate tracks, the mile and a half tracks. Well, and racing has been a, historically a big part of your family, right? Can you give us a little background on that? Yes, uh, and that my grandfather's brother, Tony Bettenhausen, was the patriarch of the racing part of the family, and that uh, he began racing in the 30s and 40s, and that became extremely fam famous in the 1950s, and that uh, doing the, uh, uh, that the, what was now the IndyCar Series. Uh, he won, he was national champion in 51 and 53, and his sons, Gary Murrow and Tony uh, Lee Jr. and that uh, went on to have fairly famous careers and that in total family participation in the Indianapolis 500 exceeded 52 races. Wow. Yeah. Now we were joking about this before but you inherited that lead foot didn't you? Yes, <laughs> yes actually you know, pretty much everyone in our family has that uh, has that problem and that uh, some of us have a control and that my father who's in his 70s still today and uh, that is tough to outrun at the racetrack uh, and that and he's uh, keeping it going at that at the Autobahn Country Club here in Joliet, Illinois. Yeah, so when the cops just see your name on the ID, they just go, oh, of course. Uh, <laughs> cops don't see my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been very fortunate. Uh, uh, many of the times, and that uh, knock on wood, and that it's been been probably about 15 years since I've got a ticket. So wow. Yeah. Okay, well, you got to teach us yeah. your ways yeah. then, because right. even though we're not part mm -hmm. of the, the family officially by blood, yeah. we, oh, we yeah. still inherited yeah. the yeah. lead feet. Yeah. Yeah. So. We've been Dallas at Dallas traffic. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> That's all for Sports Plus this week. And make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Sports Plus Show. This is the thrill, and when you dial us up, you get Sports Plus.